Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Morning. Why are you here today? Okay, so you are here today because you want to know how to make money. The way to start the new year is to know how it will perform in the new year. So let me get started. I will share my outlook for the new year. Just in case you are wondering, what is SGU Trade? Okay, SGU Trade is actually Singapore's largest broking house, UOB Kehian. Have you heard of it? It has branches in uh, all over Malaysia as well. Okay, so I do come here to talk for F1 Academy. I also have talks for Malaysian uh, branches in uh, Malaysia itself. Let me get started. 2019 has been a very eventful year. Just this week itself, okay, if we consider Sunday as the ending day of the week, just this week itself, it has been very eventful, right? The market has gone up, the market has gone down, just because of one man. <laughs> okay, so in 2019, I'm going to talk about what happened in 2019, what will happen in 2020. I will take a look at the Malaysian stock market performance. Ayman will go into more detail. And then uh, Mr. Fred and uh, our guest speaker from Macquarie will share with you more insight on the Malaysian market itself. I will share with you I will share with you more on the I will share with you more on the global market outlook. Besides the stock market, what else can you put your money in? Okay? And also what will be the strategy for you to make money in the new coming year? Okay, so let me just get started. This has been a very common theme in 2019. The trade conflict between the US and the China. What is the impact on the economy? What is the impact on the stock market itself? These 16 months, starting from the very beginning, in fact, before 2019, in 2018, Trump started this trade war. The trade war is not just a fight between the US and China. The trade war itself affects the whole world. The global economy is dependent on the success of this trade talk. If the talk doesn't succeed, it is going to weigh on the global economic growth. The whole global economic growth, later I'll share with you, economies around the world is slowing down. This is what started the whole fight. It is not just about trade. It is about the US deficit. It is about Trump election as well. It is also about global political power itself. Huawei, why is Huawei chosen as the script group of the US and China conflict? US is losing its economic power. The US is in danger of being overtaken by the Chinese companies. Huawei is now the leading technological giant, more advanced than Intel, who is from the US, 
and also developing the 5G telecom technology. If you look at the chart here, or the table here, it started in uh, July. Okay, the tariff went started in July. Why? Because the US and China. China has a very big trade deficit with the US. This one, you all know about it, right? Because why? China is the manufacturing hub of the world. China produced its product, the biggest market, most of the product is sold to the US. And we are all dependent on this Chinese market. Why? Because the subcontracting, the subcontracting uh, market is all about the region. You remember the one belt, one road initiative by China? Why do they create this? Why one belt, one road? Where does the road lead to? Where does it lead to? From US to Europe. From US to China. Why this road? Because it's easier for them to move the product from China to be sold in the US and also in Europe. Malaysia is also part of it, right? Singapore is also part of it. Singapore is a supposed to be the financial hub of this one belt, one road. Malaysia is supposed to be the distribution and the manufacturing center for this one belt, one road. So they help to build the rail to the port to be exported around the world. Once it gets into Asia, it can be transported all over the world. So what is the worry for the US? The trade deficit will grow bigger. So what will happen? The US will owe China more money. So why did Trump start this trade war? To reduce the deficit. They want China to buy more things. This is what happened. Trump says that the US is collecting a lot of money in billions from the Chinese exporter. Is it true? Why? Who pays? Chinese? Chinese pay to some extent. But the majority of the cost is passed on to the end consumer. Is Trump so stupid? Is Trump so stupid? Trump may not be so stupid, lah, but the Americans, I think they are quite stupid lah, to believe what he says. And it, can you imagine they are going to elect him for a second term? We all look at Trump. To me, I think he's going to be the worst president ever. Okay? How many of you agree with me? Oh! Great man thinks alike, huh, they say. <laughs> okay, so the effect of this 16-month war is going to weigh on all the economies in the world. The economies in the Europe is coming down. Asia itself is also coming down. Why? If China export less, then the subcontracting economy around the world also will export less because China is buying lesser. It threatens also the one road, one belt initiative. The trade conflict is not the only thing. The trade conflict is the root of the problem. Because of this trade conflict, just now I say, the global economic growth is slowing down. If you look at this chart itself, most of the market is slowing down. Trump can afford to play punk with China. Why? U.S. comparatively is still a stronger economy than the other region. Europe is weak. So if you are weak, you have less bargaining power. But is China that weak? Look at the China 
performance. Six percent, okay. Six point two in two zero one nine. Six point two in two twenty twenty, and still around above six percent in two zero two one. They always say, if you want to fight, do you choose a big person or do you choose a smaller person to fight? Why do you choose a smaller person than you? Easy to bully. Ah, Trump thinks he can bully the Chinese, but he may be wrong. And if he's wrong, this trade war can drag. And I think he realized that it is wrong. Because if you cannot get a deal, if you get a phrase one deal, it is also a deal, right? Although it's only the first phrase. Okay, so this is what is going to happen. In the year 2019, a lot of central banks are lowering interest rate. Central banks are very dovish. They have cut interest rate. How many times have the U.S. cut interest rate? Once. Three times. Okay? The U.S. has cut interest rate three times. Last year, they raised it by three times. Four times, in fact. This year, they cut by three. So we are back to almost 2018, end of 2018 level. Australia has cut interest rate three times in the last five months. What does it mean? Australia is a very big beneficiary of the Chinese economy. Why? Why is the Chi Australian dependent on China? Who is the biggest buyer of mineral resources? China. And Australia is a producer of resources. Who is the biggest coal buyer in the world? China. Who is the biggest producer in the world? Australia. And do you realize that if China don't buy, Australia got no one to sell to? Because why? Why? Nobody to buy. In Europe, they discourage you from buying coal. Because coal, why? You go to Beijing now, you see that the whole Beijing is looking like it's going to rain. This is the effect of using coal. This is the result. So if China don't buy, Australia will be affected. If China economy slow down, Australia also cannot produce because China major power driver is still coal. In the US it's different. Huh? In Europe, it is different. They use natural, they use uh, sustainable energy from the wind. But China has not reached that technology yet. And China has a lot of uh, gener power generators that are just powered by coal. And if you want to change that, you have to spend a lot of money. And if there's no complaint, no need to change. New Zealand cut interest rate only one time this year, but by a very big amount, 0 0.5. All these are in anticipation of a global economic slowdown. It doesn't mean that the economy is bad. Just like the Federal Reserve, they are cutting interest rate just in case. Insurance policy. Okay, So if the economy is slowing down, you cut to prevent it from slowing further. Hopefully, it will turn around. If all the central banks are cutting interest rate, interest rate is going to be low. If interest rate is low, who is going to benefit? Customer. Beside customer? Stock market. Investors are going to benefit. Why? In a low interest rate environment, stock market is the biggest beneficiary. Why? 
Okay, before I go on to why, let's look at what happened in 2019. I just talked about the four cases, the four points on 2019. If you are going to 2020, what do you think these few points, do you think they will prevail in the year 2020? So we are going to continue 2020 from 2019. The issue that we saw in 2019 it's going to be prevalent in the year 2020. Trade conflict is there to stay. Election is coming. Who do you think is more desperate to get a trade policy, a trade deal? Trump is more desperate. Why? Election is coming. Beside election, something is in the background. Do you know what is in the US background at the moment? Impeachment of Trump. Trump is being investigated for his role in the Ukraine uh, for Ukraine uh, uh, aids for investigation on his presidential candidate, okay, opponent's son. The US impeachment on Trump has already started. But the problem is, okay, the problem is Congress is controlled by the Democrats. Senate is controlled by the Republican. The Republican will not do anything before the election. What do you think will happen if Trump loses the election? What happens if Joe Biden wins the election, becomes the next US president? What do you think will happen? Revenge. Don't you think so? Revenge. Huh? You get my son into trouble, you try to get me into trouble, right? Try to make sure I don't get elected, right? Then if I get elected, don't you think it's payback time? <laughs> and then when it's payback time, that means the Republican loss during, uh, for the president election. You think the Republican, although they still control the Senate, do you think they will back Trump? If they don't back him, the, the Congress is controlled by the Democrats. They will impeach him. The Senate, if Trump is losing its uh, authority, if Trump is no longer the president, do you think those politicians will support a losing cause? So if they lose, what will happen? It's just the same. It reminds me of the Malaysian election. Right? It's a, win, a must-win situation. If you lose, everything is gone. Trump is facing the same problem. If he lose, he can go to jail. He must win. How to win? Later we'll talk about it. The global economic slowdown. Will it continue? Central bank's policies. Will it continue? Just now we say, right, they are likely to persist in the new year. Trade conflict, they are fighting, they are arguing, but in the end, Trump will sign a deal, partial or no deal. Okay, phrase one, he's most likely to sign. He's more desperate than China. Why in the first place have this, uh, has he come up with this phrase one deal? Why? Because he knows he cannot get a deal. So he has to get something. So he can brag about it. The Americans will elect him again. If he doesn't get elected, <sighs> those Korean drama that you see, yeah? <laughs> nah, probably you know they will create a Malaysian drama on this as well. <laughs> okay? Uh, maybe the US next next uh, Netflix uh, 
will create another uh, what US drama on this as well. We are talking about economic slowdown. Last night, what was the non-farm payroll? Very good, very strong. Okay, like what I said just now, right? They cut interest rates since the beginning of two zero one nine. Why? They are worried the global economic slowdown will bring down the economic growth. They cut interest rate. When they cut interest rate, if you look at it, U.S. is not so obvious. But look at China. Okay, this is the U.S. economic uh, GDP growth. You can see that it has been stabilizing the last two quarters around these numbers. China, just now we said, the economic growth is still 6%. Look at China. China looks like it has bottomed out already. Just now, remember the economic forecast? China is forecast year 2020, the same as 2019, 6.2%. 6.2% good or not? Don't forget, uh, China is the second biggest economy in the world. For China to grow at 6%, it means that for Malaysia, it has to grow at something like 20-30%. Because the absolute amount is big. 6% is a lot of growth. Normally, for a developed, for a big economy, do you expect double-digit growth? No. Why? Double-digit growth, uh, the share will go up by 400% already, right? Because the amount is very big. If the interest rate environment is low, what do you think will happen to your fixed deposit? The fixed deposit will be low, right? If your fixed deposit is low, where would you put your money? Why? Common sense, right? Because you can make more money from the stock market. So if you look at this way, the stock market on a global basis, it's going to go up. We may have seen the bottom. In the US, you have this bond yield. The bond yield is the US government bonds. Okay? So the bond yield, we look at it, the bond yield for 10 years is 1.7 or 1.8 percent. Do you want to put money in a 10-year bond? That means for the next 10 years, every year you get 1.8%. Is it interesting? Your inflation also more than that, right? You put money there, you're losing money, right? Okay? Just look at the low U. Nobody is going to buy the US bond. The US is going to be in greater trouble. Low interest environment. It is always good for the stock market. Why? Think of it this way. You get 2%. Can you get more than 2% from the stock market? Your dividend yield also, a lot of stock give you more than 4%, uh, 2%, right? Some of it give you, the REITs give you as much as 4%, right? So this is one factor that will drive the market higher. Equity return is still above 2%. If your return is so low, it is very easy for you to beat the market. What are the possible risks? The dispute continue. Just this week itself, there was a danger that it will continue forever, right? Trump said he will wait until the 2020 election to deal with China. Do you think he can do that? But I think he cried. He cry wolf uh, too many times already because the next day he said oh the deal is going on well so the market turned around but then you realize when it dropped uh, it didn't drop that much global economic slowdown will it persist in 2020 just now we look at it the two biggest economy looks like it is bottoming out last night we have some evidence that the U.S. is uh, improving. 
just last week itself, last Saturday, the official numbers for the PMI, China PMI, was slightly better. In the middle of the week, Wednesday and Thursday, the numbers were also above 50% and also higher than forecast. Okay, so this one, there is a risk, but I think this risk may not surface. Deflation, the biggest example is Japan. Interest rate is low, but the stock market goes no, nowhere and the economy goes nowhere. But if you look at it, Japan is not doing too bad as well, right? Even in a deflationary environment. This is the Malaysian stock market. The index has been going down. Many of you see this, shake your head. I also said. Just this week only, the H magazine add to the worldly and the gloom. Christmas is not going to be so uh, bright already, right? You're not going to spend so much money, right? Because you're worried there will be no money. But will there be no money for you to make? Yes or no? You look at it. Although the index is going down, there are many bright spots in the Malaysian market. You know this stock? What do you think? Good or not? It's going against the opposite direction of the general market. This is not the only one. What about this one? Also good, right? Did you pick this stock? Yes. Well, that's good. How many of you do pick this stock? Ah, the minority. Only three. Went up too early. You didn't spot it, right? <laughs> TAD managed to spot this. TAD spot this stock before it goes up. Later, Sifu Fred will share with you how TAD managed to spot this stock. And this is not the only one. There are a few. There are a few stocks that TAD managed to spot. TAD picked a few stocks that outperform, that double. Global market, Singapore is Malaysia's nearest rival. <coughs> Competing for the same amount of funds that the fund manager invests. Singapore is a very small market. The market cap is almost the same as Malaysia. Singapore is not a major financial, I mean a major stock market. It's a major financial center, but it doesn't have a very big financial mar uh, stock market because why? Our country is small. Even the minority Chinese in Malaysia is bigger than the whole population of Singapore. Okay, so if you look at Singapore stock market, if you know Ichimoku, we have actually broke above. And during this crisis, okay, this was last week's, last uh, Friday's uh, data. Over the next five days, the price dropped because of Donald Trump. But the important thing is, you go back and look, it stays directly above the cloud there's still no bad trend. It is still going up. If you look at Hong Kong, Hong Kong is the worst performing market. Huh? Just now you see Malaysia number two, right? Not a good number. Huh? Malaysia is the second uh, country with the worst uh, out, outflow of funds. Hong Kong is number one. Why Hong Kong number one? Will it end? Will the protest end? Hong Kong riot has the potential to go on until 2047. 
it will not end. Do you think China will grant democracy? There is no way. All these young university graduates, they should be studying and not creating trouble. Why are you studying in a university? To have a better life, right? Now you are creating a worse life for everyone. Hong Kong will continue, the riot will continue. It will continue until they decide to stop. Because China is not going to stop it. China is going to, not going to send the tank in to stop them. If you look at it in the beginning, China every week has a talk. Okay, the Hong Kong office actually you know, give a China view on the thing. They stopped doing it after two months. Why China will not stop it? Because if China bring the tank in, stop it, it will be another Tiananmen, it will be condemned by the whole world, it give Trump another opportunity to criticize China. So they'll just let it run. And never mind. If they vandalize, if they destroy the MTR, is that a problem? Not a problem, right? China can easily rebuild it. And now with the Chinese stamp, instead of the UK legacy. So it's very difficult for the riots to sh uh, stop. It may continue. But look on the bright side. If the fund manager is not going to put money in Hong Kong, they will have to put somewhere, right? Okay? So it could benefit us. If Singapore benefit. Malaysia, you will usually benefit because Singapore scope is very narrow. Oil price is going up. If oil price goes up, crude palm oil for a long time has been going down. This week, it moved above 2,800, right? If the palm oil moved above 2,800, what will happen to all those palm oil stocks? I do not know about, you know, Sam Darby uh, plantation and then what else you have? KL Kepong. Have they gone up? You know, in Singapore, uh, there's this company called Wilma. It is also a crude palm oil. It has gone above $4 recently. It has been going up. In the year 2019, it's one of the better or one of the top performing stocks. There are opportunities. Hong Kong could be a blessing for us. To me, I hope they continue. <laughs> the German economy may be slowing down. Growth is less than 1%. But you look at the index. Is it going down? Why is it not going down? The economy is going down because the GDP is low. But you look at the stock market, it is almost at the historical high. If you look at the US, despite the trade conflict, despite all those stocks, this is the only thing that Trump can brag about. The US stock market is at a historical high. The US market is going higher and higher. Okay, look at this from the year 2009. 2009 is a great financial crisis. If you're looking at what the GFC means, it's a great financial crisis. It is the worst uh, period in the US uh, economic uh, and the stock market history. Look at the numbers 2009, it was 6,462. What is the Dow Jones last night? 27,000. Okay, 28 was the high. The historical high was la uh, the week before. Okay, it went to a high of 28,137. Then it dropped last week because of the Trump again. The deal will be delayed after the election. So the market dropped. It dropped to a low of about 27, 
200. For the past two days, it has been going up. That means Thursday and Friday has been going up. It has gone up about 500 points, 600 points almost. So it's like currently 27, about uh, 800. Okay, 27, 800. We are still very, very near to the historical high. Okay, so look at this number from 6,000 to 24,000 in 10 years. Okay, in 28,000. In the last 10 years, if you have buy U.S. stocks, <sighs> if you didn't buy U.S. stock, so now the question is, wow, U.S. 28,000 already, you still ask me to buy? Can the U.S. market still go up? Yes. If it can still go up, 28,000, still can buy, right? Look at this stock. Okay, before I go to the stock, Look at the cycle high. The US is very, very nice. There's this seven year cycle. Every seven year, the market performs something that is predictable. The market gives you a chance long term to make money. Even though you are not long term, you don't hold your position for seven years. Every year, it can make you money. The previous high. In the US market is the dot com bubble, right? That was the in the year 2000, 2000. The next high is seven years later, 2007, the great financial crisis. This is something that not many people know, though. The next high was actually 2. 015. It was supposed to be 2014, the peak, but it was delayed. The bull was stronger. The peak occurs in April 2015. From 2015, don't say 2015, uh, let's say seven years. And I think it may be shorter because 2015 we extended. So the next cycle, we may actually contract a bit. Okay, because the average is about seven years. So if you look at it, 2014, seven years from now, 2021 is supposed to be the high in the stock market. If you look at the low, it is also very interesting. The seven year cycle exists. The low after the dot com bubble, 2002 February. Seven years later, the great financial crisis, the low was in 2009, March. Almost seven years, but more by one month. And then if you look at it, 2015 was not obviously the high, but 2016 February was the start of the new bull. So five years from 2016, we should see the high. If you go by the statistics, if you go by the technical chart itself, this is what we call time cycle. This is what you will study in your PF CTA course, the three months course. This is the blueprint. Every country has a five year plan, right? So stock market also has a seven year plan. So if you know the seven year plan, you can take advantage of the plan. You know how to plan your investment. So this is what I call the building block, the guide to your stock market investment. Just now we say the bull, can the bull still go on despite the high? I think so. Okay, Dow Jones. How many of you follow the Dow Jones? Only a few people follow the Dow Jones. You don't look at the Dow Jones. Ah? The Dow Jones will give you an idea, but Malaysia very independent. Ah? It doesn't really follow the Dow Jones. But Singapore is a good follower of the Dow Jones. Ah? You can look at the Dow Jones. You can also trade the Dow Jones. 
you can trade the Dow Jones using the CFD indices. If you want to know more, you can always ask Mary and Cherry. F1 has a tie up okay, with a broker to offer you to trade CFD indices. And the Dow Jones is very easy to trade, right? It's either up or down. Every one point movement is one dollar. So last night go up by 300 points, you buy the open sell at the close, you make 350 US dollar in one night. If you are not interested, okay, you see uh, this is the CFD uh, for the Dow Jones. Okay. Oops, there's one stock that is missing. Okay. The US market, as I said, is going to be bullish. Okay. If you look at the performance, not just US, huh? Dufu is in which sector? Hmm? Konken? US? Who is the biggest, who is the best performer? So don't say uh, the Malaysian stock market don't follow the US. You also follow. This is the best performing sector. S&P is up 25% for the year 2019. The information sector is up double, 41%. Better still, do full up double, more than double. So again, even though the market is coming down, there's bright spots all over the place. You need to know how to find them. How to find them? Do you know? Well, if you don't know, you can always uh, look to see full fret for guidance. This is a US stock. This is something that is very, very interesting. Again, it is in the IT sector. Okay? Last time they call it the electronic sector. Now they call it the information technology. Look at this stock. In 2018, it was, how much is it? $8. At the end of 2018, okay, it went up to a high. If you missed it, you get another chance to buy in early 2019. What's the price now? Every year it double. Will it double again in uh, 2020? Only time will tell. But I'm keen to see it happen again. Okay, so we say that Hong Kong is uh, riots will continue. Okay, so as I said, look on the bright side. If the riots continue, the fund may flow into the region. Okay, Hong Kong is supposed to be a very big market in the world. Huh? Okay, so if you look at it, funds will flow into uh, the region. It will be uh, good for us, Singapore, Malaysia. Bond yield will also be lower. So if the bond yield is lower, again, the stock market is likely to go up. The economy is, U uh, US economy is weaker. So definitely, interest rate will not go up. So in the near future, stock market, global stock market will benefit from the low interest rate environment. The risk will be there. Trade deal, we may see a phase one deal. But again, US and China will never have a full trade deal. Because why? Do you want to buy an uh, American product? Do you want to buy an uh, American car? Do you know who is the best uh, electric batteries car maker in the world? Do you realize that the biggest car market is actually China and not the US? Do you realize that China has all the big brands? 
Volvo is owned by a Chinese company. China has upgraded. Even Proton is owned by who? So Proton and Volvo are together. But hopefully, uh, Gili, uh, okay? Gili, uh, Bobo Gili. Okay? So hopefully we don't see that. But the market is moving towards China. US will not be able to catch up. The trade deficit will continue to increase. So it's very difficult for the Americans to strike a trade deal with China. But in spite of this, what happened to the stock market? The stock market has been going higher and higher, right? And then if there's a risk that the trade deal will not be done, gold is a big beneficiary. Gold, if you look at it, this is a triangle. This is going up. There is still potential for it to go higher. At least 1560 US dollar for gold. If you don't buy gold, if you are a stock market player, what will you buy? ETF, ETF for gold. Okay? You also buy gold shares. These are the biggest gold share in the world, gold miners in the world. Most of them are listed on the US exchange. Malaysia, Nimi One Gold Mining Company. Hmm? Is there more than one? Do you think they will perform better? No. Why not? <laughs> okay, so if they don't perform better, there are always alternative. Okay, so look at this. Market cap, four-year return. Over the last four years, some of it has performed very, very well. This is one of my favorite company on the US stock market. Four years, 97%. This one, of course, is uh, higher, but this one, there are others, okay? This one, this is, uh, it is actually an Australian company, but listed on the US exchange, okay? So again, this one, Australia, is not doing well, but look at those, okay? They have performed well. Don't just look at the index, the Malaysian stock index has been dropping. It doesn't mean that everything will drop. There will always be some bright spot. Either you do your homework, you pick the right stocks, or you subcontract the research to somebody else. Okay, so any questions? Okay, I can read. About the trade deficit uh, uh, between US and China, but actually uh, US is making a lot of uh, supplies through the services on China. Why is th isn't that been taken into consideration? It is already taken into consideration, but still the deficit is in China's favor. When the economy mature you will find that the economy do not manufacture anything. The economy become a service economy. So the US is a mature economy. The US is, the economy is 70% service, 30% others. The service is to who? It's to the US citizens. Singapore is the same. Singapore has become a more of a developed country now. It's no longer a developing country. It is too expensive to make things in, China, uh, in Singapore. Singapore factory has shifted to JB. Now even Malaysia also find that it is cheaper to make things in Cambodia. Vietnam is not cheap anymore. Okay, so as a country matures, the labor cost will increase. The standard of living increase, the labor cost will increase. And when that happens, you can no longer produce goods. You can only be a service center. And when you are a service center like Singapore, 
Singapore doesn't do well. Why? Because our population is smaller than the minority in Malaysia. Okay, so there's a limited capacity. So what you have said is, US is a service. How do China buy US service? The service is consumed by the local population. Okay, so the products cause the deficit. The imports cause the deficit. US do export, okay, Boeing planes. But Boeing plane, what happened? big issue. And do you realize that Boeing plane is not produced in the US, in China? <laughs> okay, Boeing plane, Boeing produced the software that runs the plane. Boeing assemble the plane. Most of the electronics parts come from China. Most of the frame the airframe comes from Canada. iPhone is the US biggest name. Who manufactured the iPhone? Why is the iPhone not on the tariff list? Why is the reason iPhone is exempted until the last part of it? Why? Because if the tariff is increased to 25%, China, okay, if the US increase the tariff to 25%, it means that the iPhone cost will go up by 25%. Who are the big, who in the world buy the most iPhone? US. So you affect the American people. And then if iPhone is so expensive, who will they blame? Trump. So that's why Trump did not increase the iPhone uh, price by increasing the tariff. iPhone is at the last part of the tariff. If there's no phase one deal, come 15 of uh, December, iPhone will be affected. But I can guarantee you, iPhone will be exempted again. Okay, one more question? Any more question? Okay, so these are the things that are likely to happen. So if you look at it, the US market is likely to be bullish. Long US market. Malaysian market, there's a possibility that we may see a low. We also may see a benefit from the riots in Hong Kong. Okay, so again, Hong Kong's poison may be a Malaysia uh, benefit. Okay, so the riots I think will continue. Hong Kong will remain a fun a place, a stock market that not many people will be keen to go in. People will buy direct from China. People will buy Hong uh, Chinese stocks. Okay, a lot of the Hong Kong stocks are actually uh, mainland company listed on the US uh, Hong Kong exchange. You will see this kind of scenario. Hutchison, Wompo will go down, but China developer will go up. RNF Guangzhou will outperform. If you have CFD, you can buy one long, the other one you short. Bond U is going to stay low. Interest rate is going to be low. Who is a big beneficiary? Stock market. So what stock to buy? Later you will get some ideas. Risk will be there because of the U US and China trade deal. As I said, you may have a phrase one deal, but you're unlikely to have an ultimate deal. Don't forget, US is capitalist country. China is socialist. Socialists will not open up their economy, right? To a certain extent only. Intellectual property. China still have a lot of download. Uh. Okay, so this one again is a issue that will not be solved. So the risk will be there. Who will be the biggest beneficiary of any risk? Gold. Why? Gold is a safe haven. When the US and China fight, gold will benefit. 
U.S. interest rate, I said, is going to be lower. When the bond yield is low, that means your opportunity cost for gold will also be low. So you can actually hold gold, it will go up. If you look at the gold, gold on the weekly chart, there's a possibility that we are in a wave three completion. Wave four is in the process. So there is a bottoming process. After that, you will go higher than one five, five, six. Gold over the two years has been going up. Eh? If you look at back at the gold chart, Oops, this way. If you look at the gold chart, this is the low in one six. Okay, around one thousand dollar, it go up. It come back here again, and two zero one nine, one one five one two zero one eight one one five six was the low. It still can go up. This is the Fibonacci retracement. If you want to learn more. Join our PF, uh, PCFTA course. If it drops below 50% or be, doesn't drop below 62%, the trend is still up. This could be a support area. We have come to this level, price has bounced up. Oil just now I say, right? Crude pump oil will also banner. Okay, The energy market is very artificial now. Okay, it is all controlled by OPEC and Russia. Okay, so look at the demand. The demand has actually uh, dropped because of the global uh, slowdown, but the price has maintained at sixty dollars because they keep cutting the supply. So crude oil price will be stable. Why? If it goes up, they will. If the demand increase, they will also increase the production. Venezuela, Iran, okay, these are countries that are prevented from selling. But if the price is high, people will still be tempted to buy from a cheaper source. Okay, okay. Thank you very much.